Salutations, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. Here I am at the London School of Economics and Political Science, or LSE, known by those initials, just the London School of Economics. They usually leave off the bit about political science. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it was founded by the Webbs, Beatrice and Sidney Webbs, um, as well as others, um, Fabian socialists, people like that. And I suppose it's carried on in the same vein for a long time. Obviously, you don't have to be a socialist or a left wing or any stripe to come here, but uh, there tends to be a bias in that direction in um, academe in the United Kingdom generally. Um, so um, now Nehru, when he came down from Trinity College, Cambridge, he attended some lectures here. Whether he was properly enrolled or not, uh, so he's always had a strong connection with South Asia and um, there's a strong South Asian contingent uh, at LSE to this day. Usually they're British Indians, British Bangladeshis and so on. Usually they're not directly coming from South Asia, but there are people who are resident in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and so forth, who come here solely for the purpose of education, are not already living in the United Kingdom. So all these buildings around us are all LSE buildings. So it's very central in London, um, near Temple Tube Station. Uh, now, the, the, as the name uh, suggests, you can only do um, economics or subjects which are allied there too. For instance, business studies, mathematics, I think you can do some language courses. I'm pretty sure you can't do Arabic. I did look into it from somebody a couple of years ago, but things change. Um, the motto is um, uh, rerum cognoscere causa, as in to know the cause of things. Um, and I think a beaver is their symbol sort of indicating, indicating uh, how hard working there are, especially we're by the river. And they, they did have a magazine called The Beaver. The trouble is that's a vulgarity if you're American. But well, a little bit of a map of it here. Oh, no, we can't really see that, can we? But we're quite close to the Thames. The Thames behind me, not half a mile that direction. We're just north of the River Thames. And you can see, ooh, they're expanding behind me. So if you're a thirsty scholar, you might um, dip into here, fortify yourself with some spirituous liquor. So yeah, almost everything here is, is to do with LSE, all these buildings, philosophy. Now, uh, I don't think you can do hard science. You can't do medicine, dentistry, engineering. Um, and you can do things like history and geography, but I'm pretty sure you have to do it with, with economics. Uh, a bit of that. There's a summer school in July and August. You can come for two weeks, or you can come for two courses of two weeks apiece and do various things like microeconomics, macroeconomics. I know bugger all about, about um, economics, so I can't uh, enlighten you there, really. So, so many of them are hanging around here. Um, so it's very conveniently um, situated. Uh, they do have some student accommodation, but not right here, close to the main site. Uh, so a branch of Waterstones with loads of books on uh, economics. <clears throat> anyway, Professor Harold Lasky was one of the leading lights here in the early 20th century, well, right until he died in, in 1950 but uh, he was skewered by George Orwell for the opacity of his prose, for his sentences which were um, overly long. He was just a prolix uh, author, and there's so many subordinate clauses. These things, uh, were, they were almost incomprehensible. Where's that the idea? Um, he, language exists for communication, but Harold Lasky didn't seem to think so. Well, it was for the purpose of miscommunication or concealment of his, his actual views, or is it just clever to write things which are simply um, impossible to understand? Maybe that's the idea. You know, blinding with science, as it were. But uh, this place, it really has caused the world to turn upside down, um, LSC, don't you think? So it's very, uh, it's a very, see what I mean? That, that was a joke, by the way. Um, but you know, if you're a clever sort of person who wants to apply to LSC, you might, you might have figured that one out. Uh, so it's got plenty of postgraduates, up to about 30% of, the, of the, the student body are postgraduates from all sorts of countries, European countries too. There are quite a few Germans and Americans. That or Orsag, um, who was, who was um, the economics guru of, of Obama, he was here for instance. Oh yeah, so just looking on the sort of corner of that building, you see LSC above the W for Waterstones, the bookshop sign, and all these various symbols of what goes on. So there's a student's union as well where people can socialize a bar and cafe and very uh, organizing various events also try and help students with their welfare um, if they're stressed out about things they help them find accommodation so all universities in this country um, uh, always have um, always have a students union often there'll be like a debating society there and this is it a bit of the student union here 
Okay, so um, what a fabulous uh, location it's in. Not very spacious, near Lincoln's in fields, but you can't play sports there. The two tennis courts. Getting a bit difficult to hear. So it's LSE is all around me. Um, now, who was it? Feroz Varun Gandhi, as in the one who Indira married. Indira um, Nehru married, as in she became Mrs. Gandhi. He was an undergraduate here. Um, oh yeah, and I'll show you the way towards, towards um, that's Lincoln's Inn Fields, a bit of greenery there, because we're close to Lincoln's Inn, as in the Inn of Court, where barristers have their chambers, that's to say their offices. And look, the old curiosity shop of Charles Dickens is hard by. If you dipped into his novels, you would have heard about that one. So you've got a bit of an idea what the LSE is like. Do you like it? Is, is it too crowded? It's just a very, very built up area. They mostly seem like office blocks. Um, it's more picturesque than it used to be when I first started walking around here in 1998. Um, so you can't drive in many of these streets. A lot of this is a pedestrian zones. Mm. Now, uh, yeah, John F. Kennedy, when he, he graduated from Harvard and he came here in the late 1930s, he was born in 1917, and um, his father was ambassador to the court of St. James. Remember, the official residence of the British royal family is the court of St. James. It's not Buckingham Palace, even though they actually live there mostly because it's much bigger. But uh, anyway, so whilst he was here in London, um, uh, John F. Kennedy, he, he um, attended some lectures at the LSE. Well, I could go around and around and show you more buildings. That's probably enough. Give you a bit of an idea of what it's like coming onto a major street called Kingsway. There is a street called Queensway, but that's about five miles away. So don't imagine that Kingsway and Queensway are right beside each other. Well, one on top of the other would probably um, make most sense. Well, I'll show across, well, who's on top of whom? I don't know how it works between them. Uh, so give you a bit of a flavor of the LSE. Um, so if you want advice about uh, getting uh, admission to any British universities, do speak to yours truly. Obviously, economics is probably the most employable subject. Make loads of money through that one. You've got to be good at maths because um, one of my students, he wanted to read economics at the LSE. And I said, what are you predicted to get in maths for AS level? He was at that stage when I spoke to him. It was a U grade, a grade U. That is a total failure. Even an E grade in those days, you'd achieve something in maths. But if you get grade U, your maths is so abysmal, you can't be said to have learned anything. And I said, well, you do realize that um, economics is, is a mathematically related subject. There is some maths in that. And the LSE is one of the most distinguished universities in the realm. So there's no way on earth he's ever going to get anywhere near LSE. There's one of the old BBC buildings down here, also part of LSC these days, with that huge statue at the top. And it's got the, the legend um, engraved into the stone, nation shall speak unto nation, as in the Anglosphere speak to each other. Obviously built in the 1930s, where not that many people spoke English. Yes, the United Kingdom, Canada, the United States, and so on, a few, a few of the other dominions, but very few other people did. Like even in India or Nigeria, only a tiny percentage of people would have spoken English in the 1930s. Right, that's probably enough from the LSC. I'm sure it's opposite that the, the, the co-op is here, as in cooperative. The cooperative society founded in Rochdale in the late 19th century by these workers saying, well, let's work together and, and make money. And we each have it make a share of that money instead of the boss making loads of money, plow things back into the business, sell things at, at low prices. And so the cooperative society was founded. They later, later made them join the Labour Party. So if you remember the cooperative society and you stand for parliament as the Labour candidate, they, put, they say you're Labour cooperative, not just Labour. So, um, yeah, you don't have to be of a political mindset to go to, to, go to LSE, but uh, it was founded by, by people in the Fabian Society, as I pointed out. All right, that's probably just about enough about the LSE. So make sure you're following me on everything, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Contact me for uh, Skype lessons in history and politics and religious studies uh, and geography, French, law, and choose me as your tour guide in London because uh, I can make it very witty and I can include lots of adult jokes if you wish or I can make it more um, appropriate for children if you've got wee ones with you. Ah, so here we are, closer look at this bit. Oh sorry, that's part of King's, King's College London, not LSC, I remember now. Okay, I'll switch it off now, toodaloo.